Alrighty, so today I'm going to be talking about the fight tab and how good every item is in it and which items you should use, which items you shouldn't use, depending on how good they are. So first off, we'll start with the spear. The spear's only good use is for making staves. So making the ice and fire staff, you need a spear for it. As far as it being a weapon goes, it's absolutely horrendous. Do not make a spear to go and fight things ever. There's under no circumstances should you ever do that. It doesn't deal very much damage, 33 I believe. And it's just such a waste of time to go build one of these. Instead, I recommend you build just an axe in the first place until you get to a better weapon which deals 27.2 damage a hit and can also be used to chop down trees and it doesn't even use science to make it. So I don't understand why people make this spear as a weapon. It's just so, so bad. Next up we have the hand bat, one of my personal favorites. So as you can see, it's quite cheap to build, but it's also one of the strongest weapons in the entire game. It deals 59.5 damage right after you build it, and over time it will spoil over a period of 10 days and do less damage over time. Within this time frame, it has no durability, so it's just that spoilage time until it goes away. So if I hit a thousand enemies with it before it spoiled, I would still have a hand bat. It doesn't make any difference. Next up is the Morning Star. This weapon deals the most damage to enemies that are wet. There's really no reason to build this. It's quite expensive to build and takes quite a lot of time to build. It's just not worth it. And generally, there's not many enemies that are wet for you to attack so next up we got the tail of three cats in player versus environment scenario it's not worth using for anything it's a longer range weapon than normal though so if you are in a game of pvp it can be very good because you can hit the other player while they can't hit you back so it can be quite strong in that situation and you can stun lock them before they can even get a hit in on you next up we have the grass suit don't make these ever, but if you just find one before you even have a backpack, go ahead and pick it up and wear it. It's perfectly good for that. It gives you a small amount of resistance to damage. I believe it's 60%. Now, that resistance to damage is very helpful. Don't get me wrong. 60% is very good compared to 0%, but it takes up the chest slot, which can be better used for things like the backpack or the Magiluminescence amulet, otherwise known as the yellow amulet, which will make you run faster. And generally, it's just not worth using chest armors unless they're really, really good. Next up we have the log suit. Once again, if you find one of these before you have a backpack, go ahead and wear it. There's no point in not doing that. It gives 80% resistance if I remember correctly, which quite a bit more than the grass suit, and it costs eight logs and two ropes. So it can be quite expensive to build one of these, and once again, it takes up the chest slot. So it's really not worth using under any circumstance. I would not build one of these ever in game, just don't. Next up we have the marble suit. So this used to cost 12 marble and four ropes to build, but they have halved it in the last update. So now it can be used under two circumstances that I can think of. Just because it is so cheap and its damage resistance is so absurdly high. So it can be very good for just standing and tanking deer clops. It can also be good for the dragonfly fight because she's very hard to kite. So the issue with the marble suit is though for general wear is it slows down your movement speed. So generally it's just not worth using even though it's damage resistance is just so high. Next up we have the football helmet. This is the best item in the entire tab just by far. All it takes is one pigskin, one rope, and it gives you a whole bunch of damage resistance. And it goes in the helmet slot, which is a bit different than the other armors we've seen so far. At all times, I'd just be wearing a football helmet as soon as I can get one, except for when I'm using an umbrella during spring. I don't generally do that during spring because you know it can rain really hard and then when you get your wetness way too high, you can die super fast. So generally that's the only time I would swap it out. Otherwise, I just leave it on at all times because most of the damage you're gonna take is physical damage and it protects a lot against that. Next up we have the cookie cutter cap. This is just another helmet. It's worse than the football helmet. It's harder to get than the football helmet. There's no reason to use this ever. I don't know why you would even go out and do any of the ocean content at this point. There's nothing worthwhile for the time investment to go get there. Just don't do ocean content. That's all it comes down to. Next up the knapsack. So I believe you get this from doing misery toadstool which is stupid hard challenge boss. I don't recommend that you kill Toadstool ever because his drops are completely worthless, including this one. This one, the only use I've seen for it is that you can deconstruct it with the deconstruction staff to dupe the mushroom skins. 
because it builds four of them, and then you use that to be able to build more mushroom lights, which are just decorative. Next up we have sleep darts. These put enemies to sleep when you hit them with it. They're way too expensive to be useful. I wouldn't build them ever. Next up we have fiery darts. They set enemies on fire when you hit them with it. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't just use a fire staff instead for this. It's way cheaper and has 20 uses instead of one. So I don't know why you would ever build this. Blow dart, okay. This one, very specific. This can be the absolute best weapon in the game for very late game wicker bottom playthroughs with a reed trap. So what you can do is you can set up a farm with a varg, then you can farm the birds in winter while you're getting a Krampus sack to get the azure feathers. So you can farm cut reeds just from putting a lure plant in the middle of the reed trap and then using applied horticulture repeatedly. So you can get hundreds of these. Now, what the Wicca Bottom players will do in these really late game worlds is they'll just carry around a couple stacks of these and they deal so much absurd damage and you can use them at long range that they're just the best weapon overall for them to be using at basically all times. Electric dart. Saffron feathers are too much of a pain to get and gold nuggets, you can't farm a lot of them all at once. So there's really no point in using these over just the blow darts that in that very specific circumstance. Boomerang, I would use these if I found one on a boon, but I would never craft one. They only deal like 270 damage or something in total, but it costs a board, a silk, and a charcoal to make, so it's just way too expensive for what you get out of it. Its use cases are you can use it to aggro enemies, so basically if you have a qualifant that just keeps running away from you, you can just chuck this at it and then you'll aggro it on you. Uh, you can aggro dragonfly with it, things along those lines. Be mine. This is used for a couple cheese methods. So say for instance, if they removed the pillar method that is used for killing uh, ancient guardian, then you could use be mines instead because that's another cheese method for him. Uh, it works on some other bosses too, but I don't ever use them because I'm pretty sure it's for the bosses that don't drop anything good. So tooth traps. These are basically the only real base defense that you'll ever get. So it costs a log, uh, a rope, hound's tooth. They deal 60 damage after every use. They have 10 uses. After each use, you do have to reset the trap. So basically people will use these to get rid of hound attacks. Now, because I play Wolfgang basically all the time or Wickerbottom, I don't use these ever in play. So if you're playing Wolfgang, you can legit just hold control F with a decent weapon against town attacks. And if you're playing Wicker Bottom, you can use on tentacles as a better base defense, but that's, you know, her class specific thing. So this would be, if you're not one of those characters, you could use these and then kind of just place them around your base to make it a little bit safer. Scale mail. Now, this item is very weird, okay? You can see here that it takes a scale from the Dragonfly, which is a raid boss, so pretty hard to get these, right? And then it also takes a log suit and a couple pig skins, so pretty expensive. Now, what it does is whenever an enemy attacks you, it sets them on fire. So in player versus environment play, you definitely do not want to use this item. It's super bad because the enemies will attack you get lit on fire, and then they will light everything around them on fire. So say for instance, an enemy attacks you at your base, they go and suddenly get set on fire, and suddenly your entire base is on fire, and you're not gonna have a fun time. Now, if you are playing in PvP, there is a very specific strat with this, where if you're playing Wolfgang, you can go and chip one of these off the dragonfly just on day one, day two, and grab one of these. Now, if a player is getting set on fire every time they attack you, there's basically nothing they can do to stop you. You basically won, unless someone else has the pan flute and you're playing in a game with sleep enabled, which is very boring. So that's its use case. Weather pane. This is used for farming living logs and for the ancient fuel weaver fight to make it way easier. You can see here that it takes down feathers, which are from the moose goose boss in spring. So it's quite expensive to build these. It also takes gears and vault goat horns, so nothing here is very common. But they are a really, really strong item if you have them. I would highly recommend you use them if you have the resources for it. So build these if you already have the items for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't really, you know, go out of your way to go grab those items because they do take a while to go gather. Strident Trident, you need to go kill the Crab King for this, so there's no reason why you would want to go do that. That's so off-the-wall stupid to me because that boss is 
unbelievably difficult for its drops and you can it's basically only good out in sea and the content out at sea isn't even worth doing there's nothing there that's better than the content on land and it takes so long to go do there's just no point now there's two other items i want to talk about in here that will show up if you're playing wigfrid so wigfrid has her battle spear and battle helmet her battle spear is Quite frankly, it's the same as the spear, except you can't even use it to build staffs, so I don't know why you would ever possibly want to use that. It's a completely trash item. It's a, it's a stronger spear, but you don't want a stronger spear. There's better items than spears. Battle helmet, which costs um, two rocks, two gold, and is better than a football helmet. So that is really, really good. Her battle helmet is very strong and useful in a lot of situations. That's why people will refer to Wigfrid as Helmet Slave, because Wolfgang is basically better than her in every way, except for her helmet just being a super strong item. So that's like the reason why people would play Wigfrid if they actually know the efficiencies of the game. And that covers the fight tab. If there's anything you want to know, just leave me a comment below. I'll answer your questions. I make sure to read all the comments. So if you have any questions, I'll make sure to answer those. And yeah, make sure to like the video and I will send you your own helmet slave, okay? You don't, you don't gotta worry about it. You get your very own helmet slave. They'll make you helmets all day. You gotta feed them though, all right? And then I also need you guys to make sure to subscribe to get that. Bye-bye guys.